Hey guys, it's Marta. It's finally warm. The grass is getting greener every day. The birds are singing and my magnolias started blooming. So today let's talk magnolias. Right behind me, you can see my oldest magnolia. It's Rustica rubra, and she's been with us uh, since the beginning of our garden. When we planted the tree 16 years ago, it was really a small tree. It was like a meter and a half. And during the summer, we planted it in spring, and during the summer, we had a huge storm and it got broken by half. Uh, I was not really not sure if it would survive, but it did, and it has two trunks. It's very unique, uh, but I really love it. It's my favorite tree in the garden. So Rustica rubra has quite uh, big petals. It has a delicate scent, uh, but you can feel, feel it or scent it just as the weather is very warm. I think uh, if I could say it's when the temperature is around 20 degrees Celsius, then you can smell it. And when I cut some branches for the house, and in the house it's more than 20 degrees, you can always smell it. And the smell, I would say, is very similar to lilies. Magnolias are beautiful trees, but there is one problem with them. They are very prone to late frost. And in our country, we get frost until the 15th of May. And uh, for us, magnolias usually start blooming at the middle of April or sometimes at the beginning of May, depending on the year. So we are always stressed if we'll get the frost, if we'll lose the petals. Uh, over the years, we've been doing so many crazy things like lightning a little fire just below the magnolia to save the petals. But this year we are very lucky and it, she's blooming beautifully or it is blooming, but I always call her she because it's Rustica and in Polish, when you have an A at the end, it means a girl. So I always call her my girl. If you're thinking about buying a magnolia and growing it in your garden, give it a sheltered space. This is not the best position. Sometimes uh, we get uh, frosty wind and this is why the petals are usually damaged. But sheltered position, uh, thinking about soil. Magnolias like slightly uh, acidic conditions or neutral. Uh, we have a neutral, neutral soil. As you can see, I have hellebores growing below the magnolia. So I tried to give it a really neutral soil. So both the plants would be happy uh, and we give it a lot of organic matter. So I mulch with compost uh, and we fertilize once a year. I always get a lot of questions if it's possible to prune your magnolia and it is. Uh, there is a common uh, misunderstanding that you cannot prune a magnolia. You shouldn't prune the main uh, stems but uh, the tiny ones, the thin ones, of course you can, and uh, but you have to do it uh, in late spring or early summer. It's better than uh, at the beginning of spring because then it can be prone to frost. But after that, it's really good for it. We are doing it every year because we have a lot of birch trees on that side. Uh, the magnolia is always trying to go to this side and the whole tree is like this. So this is why we are doing the pruning and we usually do it, uh, I would say, early June, early June and we just shear it <laughs> as where we can reach and we are trying to make the shape more round. Another interesting thing about magnolias is that they can bloom twice. Uh, of course, the main show of the flowers is in early spring, but sometimes they bloom in uh, summer. It's very hard to see the flowers because magnolia has very huge leaves and the flowers are hidden. But sometimes I sit on my, uh, on my terrace and I'm looking, what is this color at the uh, top of my magnolia? And it is blooming and it's usually in summer. I wanted to show you the size of the flowers. I will take one and we'll go to my other magnolia called Laura and I will show you how big the flowers can be. I think Laura has the biggest flowers of all magnolias. They are really, really huge. This is a new tree in our garden. We've been having it for only two years. So let's go and see how the big the flowers are. So this is Laura. Let's see, <laughs> see how huge the flowers are. They are incredible. I thought 
This would be magnolia that would start flowering after my rustica rubra, but no, she wants to be the first one in the garden and she gets uh, her head smashed by the frost. So some of the uh, buds were unfortunately damaged by the frost we had uh, a few weeks ago. But the flowers are incredible and the scent is stronger than rustica rubra. Also similar to lilies. So this tree is only a baby, maybe like a early teenager but when it's an adult it will be six meters tall and it will be six meters wide so it will be a really huge tree i can only imagine how uh, it could look <laughs> I, ca I, ca I can't wait we'll see uh, the tree hopefully will get that we get early frosts and uh, it will bloom a bit later hopefully or maybe it will be a bit warmer in the coming years but really the size of the flowers is mind-blowing. I think there is not that much space, but as I said, you can prune your magnolias. It can be a bit smaller uh, if it will grow like crazy. But if your uh, garden is small, uh, you can always have a magnolia that is smaller. And I wanted to show you one that is uh, smaller and it's very resistant to frost. So this is another baby magnolia. This one is called Leonard Messel and it's Magnolia stellata. So like a star shaped magnolia. The flowers are very resistant to frost. They can withstand, I think, minus four, minus five degrees Celsius and it, uh, they won't be damaged. So this is for those of you who get a lot of late frosts. I think this magnolia will look beautiful. It doesn't grow uh, that big. I will check about four meters high and four meters wide so like smaller magnolia for your garden and i think those flowers are so delicate and so beautiful but uh, no no scent at all so all i need is time and patience and i think those trees will get bigger and bigger uh, what i'm happy about is that they started blooming the year we planted them uh, they came with buds they flowered just as we uh, put them in ground but uh, last year and this year we got flowers with uh, my rustica rubra we had to wait seven years to get the blooms so i'm really happy with those babies that being so young they are giving us so many flowers Okay, I have also two magnolias in the garden, but they are not blooming yet. I will show you that in other videos. I wanted to show you my hyacinth border because it's uh, still blooming, but it will finish soon. I hope next week I will be showing you the tulips. Some of them started blooming. I've been cleaning the patio all day today and it finally looks like it should. It was so dirty, but today I can say it's really beautiful. Some of the hyacinths here on the uh, shelves are, are spent. They are looking a bit sad. I wanted to show you what to do when your uh, bulbs stop blooming and what to do to have good results with those bulbs next year. So when the flowers are spent, uh, it's good to remove the stalk. Uh, we cut it at the base and we let the leaves yellow, dry. This is the moment when the bulb is getting all the energy for next year. So it's good to leave your bulbs in a sunny position. Of course, I don't want the bulbs to stand here in a beautiful display looking at the yellow leaves. So I uh, usually take the pots or I take uh, the, the bulbs out of the pot but not messing with the roots and I put it somewhere sunny but out of the sight and in the autumn I can use the bulbs again. But what about those hyacinths that you have in your borders? You cannot remove them from this site. Uh, what can you do to hide the yellowing leaves a bit? Let's see. So here in this border we can still enjoy a lot of flowers but uh, they will be spent in a moment. The thing that I'm always trying to do with my bulbs, uh, being it hyacinths or tulips or uh, alliums, I always try to put a lot of perennials. And the perennials, as they are growing, they are getting a lot of leaves. And some of the leaves are uh, covering those yellowing leaves. And this is my idea of how to do it, not to be mad at those leaves, because they, are, they don't look too, uh, too nice. So, like uh, here I'm growing catmint. Nepeta, and as it grows, it's uh, it gets like it looks like like a mound, 
and it's covering some of those leaves. But then when the leaves are getting really yellow and ugly, I will cut them one by one. Just as I'm walking with my coffee, I'm always taking some of them so the border looks nicer. So after the plant stops blooming, it will try to uh, make seeds so it can have more babies. But we don't want that. We don't want the energy from the bulb going for the seed production. We want all the energy to be in the bulb. So it's also big, huge and will give us beautiful flowers next year. This is why we are removing the flower stalks and then we are letting the leaves yellow because all the energy from the sun will be going to the bulb, not for the seed production. Okay, talking about bulbs, I did not show you my daffodils. Let's see, I have a lot of yellow ones. Behind me you can see my raised bed. I'm growing flowers for cut flowers, so I can bring them uh, to the house and enjoy them also inside. I'm growing my bulbs here in pots and they are put in the raised bed because I had problems with, with moles, with mice, they were eating my bulbs. And this uh, idea was a great idea because uh, none of my bulbs were eaten. So we have a lot of daffodils, tulips and also hyacinths and I'm taking them to the house and enjoying the garden inside can't wait for this border. I planted so many tulips here. We have a lot of alliums here, a lot of perennials, roses, clematis, everything is here. Soon the show will be beautiful. So I hope you will join me in the next videos to see how it all turned out. Okay guys, thank you for watching. Hope I will see you in the next uh, video. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing. See you in the next one.